Hey everyone, it's Zach Beck. Today I want to talk to you about recession-proof investing. Now 2020 started off very well. The economy was strong, unemployment was low, and the stock market was at all-time highs. But many things have changed since then. Since then, now millions of people are on unemployment. The stock market has been very volatile, dropping below 30% of what it was just a number of months ago. And we're seeing a completely new economic structure in place right here, right now. So what I want to do is share with you strategies that you can employ right now to manage your investment portfolio the most strategic manner possible in the midst of a recession. So I'm hopeful that these strategies will allow you to navigate through this process, prepare yourself financially so that way you can come out of this recession in a better position than you were before. So let's jump into it right now. The first thing you want to do in the midst of a recession is to be mindful of the present, but stay focused on the future. And this is very important in this current climate we are facing right now. It is so easy to become obsessed and depressed by the financial news that we're encountering. Most people are going to find that their net worth on paper is actually going to be less than it was prior to this recession coming to fruition. So what I want to encourage you to do is that in the midst of this moment right now, obviously you have many things you have to consider. You have to consider your health, your safety, and making sure that you're making money enough and bringing it in enough so that way you can remain financially whole. So you're going to be mindful of your position at your work. You're going to be mindful of how you can provide for your family, keep a roof over your head and food on the table. But most importantly, you do not want to become obsessed with this current climate we are facing because that will only lead you down a negative trajectory. So my encouragement to you is that to be mindful of this current issue we are facing, that allows you to make wise decisions that are specific to that, whatever you're having to do. But most importantly, importantly, think long-term and stay focused on your long-term financial goals. You're going to find that if you maintain a buy and hold strategy when it comes to your investments into the stock market, that is generally going to yield you a profit long-term. Whereas if you allow this moment right now to actually pull money out of the stock market, it might not be the best time to do so. There's a saying by Dave Ramsey and he says the following. He says, the only people who get hurt on a roller coaster are those who get off in the middle of the ride. So what I mean by that is that whether the economy is going up or the economy is going down, you're only going to have a negative issue if you get off in the middle of your goal because the goal of riding a roller coaster is to get to the end and have fun going up and down. The same thing, it's not necessarily fun going up and down when you have your investments in the stock market, but you want to realize that you will get hurt and lose out on some of the most significant gains if you get out of the stock market at a lower time when it's in, the, in there. And also if you're not keeping your money when it's high, you're not necessarily getting all the gains long term as well. So the whole intention of that is you, if you're investing in index funds, if you have a Roth IRA, a 401k, try and do what you can to maintain a long perspective when it comes to that. Obviously being mindful of the fact that if you have specific needs right now, keeping a roof over your head, food on the table, doing everything you can to stay healthy during this time, just make sure that you're attending to those needs, but you're not becoming so focused on them that they get you off course and prevent you from achieving your long-term goals. So that's what I'd recommend you do. The second investment strategy you want to maintain in the midst of a recession is to reassess your risk tolerance. Now, what you're going to find is that most recessions do not have a very quick recovery. You might have heard people speaking in the news about a V-shaped recovery where the economy goes down and then immediately skyrockets back up. You've heard other people saying more like a Nike swoosh recovery where it's going to go down fast but then gradually increase over time. Historically, what you're going to find is that most recessions have about a four to 10 year recovery period. So what you're going to find is that the recovery we're currently facing right now compared to where we were a few months ago, it's gonna take time. It's gonna take potentially years until, until we're back at that same state, if not even at a better state later on. But with that comes a new opportunity right now to reassess your risk tolerance. And what a risk tolerance means is that how are you able to handle a recession? How are you able to handle a downturn in the economy? And you, if you have the opportunity to sign up for different um, groups where you can purchase stocks, whether that's from Van, Vanguard, from Betterment, from Wealthfront, from Robinhood, from Webull, from any sort of company that you can purchase stocks from, generally speaking, you will actually answer questions such as, what is your risk tolerance? And that allows you to gauge how much you're investing into ETFs, individual stocks, how much you are investing into bonds, and what that ratio looks like, so that way you can actually stomach it when the time comes when the economy will turn down. So if you're in the midst of this moment right now, and you have a really challenging situation, 
situation that you're facing. First of all, I am very sorry that is what you're encountering right now. But secondarily, what I wanna encourage you is that if you believe your risk tolerance prior to coming into this recession was maybe a little too optimistic, you thought you could actually handle more than you can right now, take your time and reassess that. Perhaps you need to scale back, get your ratio of stocks to bonds a little bit different so that way you can actually make sure you're not as concerned the next time a recession hits. However, if you have made an honest assessment prior to this recession of what your risk tolerance is, now is a time to adhere to that. So try and stick to your goals, stick to your financial objectives, make sure that you're investing in the long term with a buy and hold strategy. However, if you believe that maybe you were too optimistic and bought off too much than you could chew previously, now is your time to reassess that and maybe get your portfolio equated to where your risk tolerance truly is. The third investment strategy that you want to employ in the midst of a recession is to make sure that you have enough cash on hand. And the reason why this is very important is that you do not want a recession to force you to sell a distressed asset or to sell any part of your portfolio at a low or discounted rate. The reason why is you don't want to lose the benefits of compound interest. You don't want to lose any of the interest that you've gained over time. And furthermore, you want to continue down the trajectory of your long-term financial goals. So hopefully you do not have to do so. But if you're in the midst of an issue right now where you need to pay rent, you need to pay a mortgage, you need to pay off your car, you need to pay your bills, you need to pay your phone, whatever it is for you, this is your opportunity to assess how much cash do you need to have on hand. That's why it is so important for all of us to maintain a three to six month uh, emergency fund that we have in the account for us to be able to access in the midst of an instance like this. Now, if you have one and you've already exhausted it, now it might be time for you to assess what stocks you might need to sell. Now, once again, I say that with the big disclaimer that I don't really recommend selling it, but you have to meet your needs. But if you have a, an approach, a mentality, a thought process, we're able to maintain an emergency fund that is going to prevent you from having to make very difficult decisions down the road. So hopefully you can make sure that you have proper employment, you're receiving enough income, you're diversifying your streams of income so that way you have a bit more stability in the midst of a recession, whatever it is for you, just make sure that you have some cash on hand. And right now would be a great opportunity for you to assess that. And if you need to save up more money, try and do so right now by cutting expenses, by scaling back, by negotiating with your bills, by doing anything you can in this instance right now to build up that emergency fund so that way you don't have to sell your most precious assets, which would be your long-term investments. The fourth investment strategy you want to employ in the midst of a recession is to focus on solutions rather than problems. Now, I said before, in the news right now, it is constantly negative. Whether it's negative financial news, negative political news, negative social news, there is so much out there right now that can just become a significant weight on our shoulders. And specifically from a financial perspective, if you are receiving significant and intaking significant negative financial news, generally speaking, by the time that news has been reported, it is really too late for you or I to even act on it in a tangible manner where it actually could have any sort of merit or any sort of worth for us to actually benefit from making a decision. For example, if a stock is going low, if it's being reported right now, now is not the time to necessarily go and do that. People are probably already benefiting from that. So you wanna actually be focused on solutions rather than problems. And I think this is just a good mental approach to maintain, like I said, not just from a financial perspective, but from a political perspective and a social perspective. I'm not saying keeping your head buried in the sand or being ignorant. What I am saying is that the more negative things you focus on, the more negative that generally causes all of us to be. And that has impacts from a relational perspective with other individuals. It causes us maybe to be less productive at work, so therefore that affects our income, which doesn't allow us to achieve our financial goals. Once again, things like this, negativity really is a multifaceted component of our lives and it touches every aspect of our lives. So trying to stay focused not only on just being positive, but being solutions oriented is a great thing to do in this midst. The fifth strategy that you want to employ in the midst of a recession is to automate your investments. And the reason why this is so important is that if you have a long-term financial objective, setting up the infrastructure to help you achieve that goal is extremely important. Now, this is something I've personally done in my own life. And the reason why I do this is because it allows me to have less stress in my life. It allows it to be simple. Here is how this works specifically for myself. From my paycheck, I automatically have money coming out of that going into a 401k. In addition, I have money coming out of my paycheck going into a pension fund as well from my specific employer. 
Then, after I've received the deducted investments that are automatically going into index funds through that specific 401k and the pension fund, then I actually personally invest into a Roth IRA. And that is automatic. It's gonna happen every single month. A set amount goes into that account every single month, once again, into index funds with a proper ratio between bonds and stocks. Then I have specifically money going into a separate joint account with my wife where I just invest directly into the stock market and that one is totally separate, but every month it goes in there. Then I have extra money that goes specifically set into a high interest savings account. So when I have this in place, it allows me to not have to think about it. I've taken the time to put together a strategy in place where I know that I'm automatically off of the top of all of my income, money is automatically being invested, no matter if the stock market is up or if it is down. This is a long-term strategy. And I personally have found this to be so fruitful in my life. I haven't changed a thing in the midst of this recession. Now, this is specifically how it works for myself. It could be different for you. You might need to scale back because of income not being received due to a layoff or a first so I'm not prescribing this to anyone. I'm just telling you this is the strategy that I employ. And if you set it and forget it, it allows you to have your mind freed up to focus on other more creative endeavors. And also if you see other opportunities that come your way, you can just use those to augment, not to change your strategy, but just to enhance your strategy that you've already employed. Because if you're able to be consistent by doing what's called dollar cost averaging, meaning that you're every single month or every single week putting money into your account, investing in the stock market, that is going to grow over time. And eventually you're going to find that long-term that is going to have a greater return than if you were just to try and invest strategically one moment when the stock market is low and you try and hit the timing when it's high. And the saying is that you never want to time try and time the market because time in the market is better than trying to time the market. So from that perspective, my encouragement is to get an automated investment strategy in place, whatever it looks like for you. And then once you have that, set it and forget it and move forward. And then only change that if something very significant happens that requires you to do so. Now, when it comes to the specific type of accounts that you can invest in, you've heard me refer to what are called index funds. Now, what I wanna share with you are just a couple of different index funds that exist right now that you can invest into, whether going directly through this company or through other companies, whether, like I said, you use Betterment or if you use Wealthfront or if you go directly to a company like Vanguard or something else, whatever it is for you. My encouragement is that looking at these specific accounts, if you're using them for a 401k, a Roth IRA, a 457, a 403b, like I said, this is what I want to share with you. The first is a Vanguard equity fund, which is called VT Sachs, and it has a great track record, a great history, and it's very easy to get into at a very low cost. The next is VVIAX, and this one is actually another low cost index fund. This one has a lot of value to it because it's specifically investing into stocks that are generally below value. So they've assessed them and believe this is a better investment opportunity. Then you have what's called VOOV, so V-O-O-V. And this is the Vanguard ETF designed to track the S&P 500 value index. Furthermore, you have VU, just V-O-O. And this is Vanguard's ETF that tracks the entire S&P 500. And last, you have what's called VBTLX, or VBTLX, whatever you want to call it. That's the Vanguard bond market. And this one specifically, uh, bonds are not necessarily the way to go all the time, but it basically acts like a ballast in the sense that it kind of keeps you grounded if you invest in bonds. So as you're getting older, you might invest in more bonds. When you're younger and you can actually have a higher risk tolerance, you invest in less bonds. Specifically for myself, I right now invest in 90% stocks and 10% bonds. And I do that because that's what I read Warren Buffett does. That's the research I've looked at and it seems to work right now for myself, the returns I'm receiving are congruent with what I was expecting. So from that perspective, those are just a couple of accounts that you can specifically invest into. I am not speaking on behalf of Vanguard. I'm just saying that these are the ones that have a great track record. They usually track, like I said, the S&P 500 or the total stock market or some very good value stocks. So just take a look at that and see if they work for you. Now, generally speaking, I don't recommend investing in individual stocks as your primary strategy for actually achieving wealth long term. However, right now, there are some opportunities that exist as it pertains to investing in some blue chip stocks, meaning some very valuable, strong companies that are out there that might actually provide some value. Once again, I'm not being paid for uh, to say this by any of these companies. I'm just giving you this assessment, but it might be worthwhile if you're looking to augment your investment strategy by investing specifically into some of these 
stocks which do have dividends that yield and that actually can provide you some additional passive income. First would be Bank of America. Now Bank of America is a large institution in our country, it's very well known, and they are at a value right now when it comes to investing. Furthermore, JP Morgan Chase, another one that you're gonna find is at a good value. Boeing, right now people are limited in their ability to travel. That has depressed Boeing stock because they produce planes. However, long term you have to think, longer down the road people are going to want to travel again and perhaps that's going to be an opportunity for Boeing stock to increase so just one you might want to keep an eye on furthermore General Motors people haven't been traveling as much because of stay-at-home orders or limitations or restrictions in one state versus another state so, and maybe they're not um, working at the office they're just teleworking so they're working at home virtually so they're not driving as much now that's something that's going to be in place for a while but maybe not long term so looking at General Motors a car company that you might want to consider that's another one that's at a good value right now. Now here are a few last things that you can do with your money in this moment to actually get ahead. And why this is important is that, like I said, there are investment strategies that you can employ specifically in the stock market. These are separate from the stock market, but they do carry a lot of value personally. First would be investing in yourself. This is a very unique moment we are living in. It's an opportunity for us to express ourselves more creatively, perhaps understand that we have a different level of interest in one sector of the economy, discover new gifts that we have, whatever it might be for you. This might be an opportunity for you to reevaluate your vocational trajectory. This might be an opportunity for you to actually reassess what you want to do with your life. So invest in yourself, whether that's through taking a course online, maybe investing in some sort of technological equipment that allows you to pr produce content that can be worthwhile and meaningful for others doing something different, whatever it might be for you, this is an opportunity to invest. Now, my wife and I have actually taken this opportunity to invest and help her open up her own business. So she's actually started her own business, it's called Solace. It provides gift boxes to those in need. And it's a really cool thing because people, if they're encountering cancer, divorce, depression, anxiety, or anything like that, people purchase a box and actually send it to them. And it has like calming things in there, like, you know, a, a gelled face mask, a, a really nice, you know, lotion, scented candles, you know, a calming components of it, a journal that you can write in and actually calm yourself down. So I'm not saying this to plug your company, I'm just saying that this is an opportunity to invest into yourself. So if you find that you have the opportunity to have more time on your hands than you did previously, or perhaps you actually wanna pursue something different, maximize this opportunity while still simultaneously being in the present and understanding that just getting through every day is still a victory in and of itself. Another strategy that you want to employ in this time is to pay down debt. Now this is very important because debt is one of the worst things that you or I can encounter, specifically in the sense that it takes away our hard, in hard income and it's usually at a very high interest. And from that standpoint, I would strongly encourage you to try and pay down your debt if possible. And you can use various methods to do this, whether that's Dave Ramsey's called the debt snowball method or use a debt avalanche method. The debt snowball method, basically what you do is you pay your lowest debt first that has the lowest amount due, you pay it all off and then you move to your higher debt and then you pay that off and then you go all the way to your highest debt and pay that off when it comes to what's due totally. Then from the debt avalanche perspective, you kind of do it the opposite. You start with your highest interest debt first and then work your way down to your lowest interest debt first. Whatever it is for you, it doesn't matter to me. I just believe that the less debt you have, the more freedom you have, and the more ability you have to achieve your financial goals. And one thing to bear in mind is that recessions are difficult. They affect us personally, physically, psychologically, financially, emotionally, relationally. They touch so many aspects of our life. And then when you factor in that this recession was caused by an illness, it does have an impact from us from a health perspective as well. So I just wanna offer you encouragement that if you're going through a difficult time right now, just wanna let you know I'm here. I hope that you get through this. I'm very sorry for any challenges that you've encountered. But most importantly, I believe that if you address this in instance, address this moment and capitalize on it by employing these strategies, it will position you to achieve your long-term financial goals. So do whatever you can to invest in the stock market long-term. Don't focus on the negative news. Try and do everything that you can to pay down debt, to invest in yourself, to find long-term strategies by automating your investments, and you're going to be okay. I believe that in my heart. So from that standpoint, I just really want to thank you for what you're doing by researching this information, by trying to do what you can to make wise decisions in this moment, and ultimately trying to achieve your goals. 
So with all that being said, I would like to thank you for taking the time to watch the video today. If you wouldn't mind, please like the video. It would actually mean a lot to myself personally as I want to do everything I can to make a positive impact in the lives of others. And I'm sure you know someone out there who's encountering a difficult time right now due to this illness. And hopefully this video can offer them some insight and some strategies that allow them to get through this time and also allow them to move forward so that way they can achieve their financial goals by becoming financially whole. In addition, if you have any questions, please comment down below. I'd love to interact with you, answer any questions that you have, get your feedback, and also provide any additional insight or research I can do for you. I really love it when people ask questions on these different videos and I can research information, provide my own insight, and help you make practical decisions and inform your decisions. So please comment down below if you'd like to. Furthermore, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to myself personally. I'm gonna to continue to do everything I can to create content that does make an impact in your life from a positive perspective. So you're gonna find that I'll be covering topics ranging from personal finance all the way to politics. And I hope that you enjoyed. And if you subscribe, you'll get be able to be noticed anytime I post a video. And on that note, if you wouldn't mind, please tap the notification bell. That will notify you every single time I post a video, which I do on a weekly basis. Once again, I'd like to Thank you for taking time to watch the video today. I look forward to talking to you next time. Have a great day.